So good morning again, everyone. Leslie Grill here from the Southeast Organic Partnership at Tuskegee University. And we are uh, delighted to be with you again for a number two of our Lunchbox series to engage with our grower partners and uh, just share information uh, amongst uh, each other. And today specifically, we're talking about the weather blunders that we've had over the last uh, few weeks that have really caused uh, quite a, quite, I guess you could say trouble. Uh, I'm calling them weather blunders. And so we're going to talk with a little bit with uh, Dr. Pumblaku and uh, Karen Wynn, Ms. Wynn, about uh, some recovery strategies and particular issues that we need to pay attention to. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Karen to discuss um, our weather blunders and recovery strategies. Okay, sounds good. Um, well, you know, we're just, we're trying to, to talk about the most relevant issues as we move forward with this research project and Considering the terrible weather everyone's been having on the East Coast, I thought this was a, a pretty good place to start. I, I had asked Shirley, uh, Shirley Daughtry from Heritage Organic Farms, who's over near Savannah, to, um, to talk a little bit about what she's been experiencing and, and how she's dealing with it. She's, Shirley, I think you've been farming for what, like 30 years and, and you know, have a lot of experience with bad weather and and recovery strategies. So I thought if, if you could talk about what what you're doing this year and, and how you've sort of dealt with the, the weather extremes, that would be a good place to start. All right. I think we're having a little trouble. Okay. Shirley, I think we're having a little trouble with Shirley's audio. So Karen, Shirley, you, you keep uh, working on finding that unmute button um, and just interrupt us again as uh, as you can come back on. Do we have you there? All right, Karen, back to you. Okay. All right. Um, well, I was also going to ask Janine to report from North Carolina and let us know. They've, I don't think it's been quite as extreme as the Georgia coast, but I, I know that North Carolina farmers have had um, plenty of rain too. Janine, can you talk a little bit about, about how, how backed up your planting schedule is and, and what kind of strategies farmers are using to, to get back on track? And we just want to let you know that, um, that that's fine. We totally understand that, that if you can't get into the field, you can't get into the field. And, and please proceed as as you would normally proceed with with the research plot as you would with any of Karen, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Is this Karen? <laughs> this is Shirley. All right, yeah, go ahead now that we've got you. Okay. Um, well, we just had a pretty bad season with the crops because it was so cold for so long this winter. And then when it got time to sort of go to the field and start planting, it rained. It rained every day, most all, all of the day, for three solid weeks with three flooding rains. And we had already planted our trial plots <laughs> And, of course, they just disappeared, more or less, the peas and the tomatoes. And so we felt like the best thing to do would be to start over. We're in a different area now, but rain and wind are our big weather problems. Uh, not heat and not cold, not temperature, but the wind and the rain. And this has been getting worse every year for the last five years. We went to a hoop house, which helped a lot until the wind blew two of them down and we still are left with one. This year, however, it flooded. We can correct that by digging drainage ditches, however. I think the hoop house is a good solution to the particularly the rain problem. Now, in the summer, which is now, 
we are still doing the hoop house, and we are um, putting we put a fan in there, and we have a shade cloth on the top, and we've opened the sides and the doors, and hopefully uh, it will work better. It's a very small operation. If it does work, we will have the other hoop houses repaired and go more towards that solution for the rain. Now we're starting trial two in a different area, and I just hope that it we don't have that much rain again. Um, uh, I don't know what your questions might be. I know that in the winter we had um, pretty pretty much snow. We've never had snow before, and uh, it did help. Instead of the heavy rains, we had snow, which was a much milder way of providing um, uh, providing humi- to humidity to the plants. So the kale was the best we've ever had. We have never seen kale grow like that. And it was covered with snow for at least a week. That's the first. But through the years, I've learned that there are always going to be firsts that we have to look at and deal with. And usually the solutions are pretty much common sense solutions. We don't have insect problems that much, nor disease, just the weather, mainly the rain. Any questions? I'd like to hear what has been said, if anyone has spoken about their problem with the weather this season. Okay, so we do have a couple more. Thanks, Carly. Go ahead, Karen. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, yeah, I just wanted to open it up to any other comments or questions to uh, from anyone else. <clears throat> Can you hear me yet? I can yeah. hear you. Yeah. Lee, can you hear me? <laughs> we can all hear you. You're good to go. All right. I don't know what happened with our microphone this time. Um, <laughs> this is Janine in Western North Carolina. And depending on where you are located at, for example, our county where we are right now, Henderson County, we got 18 to 21 inches of rain. Yeah. between May 15th and May 30th. So uh-huh. we had extraordinary flooding just standing in the fields where it just couldn't soak in any faster, and also all the streams and rivers and everything came out. So we had a lot of damage to um, particularly early tomato and pepper growers. And then the fields were just too wet to work. So, for example, today, uh, my crew, the reason we don't have Margaret on is she's out planting our fields, our project on the research station right now, but she reported back to me early this morning that they got an inch of rain last night, so the cow peas can't go in just yet. Uh. So we're not too late yet, most of us. We still have time to get our vegetables in. We've got another week or so that we would feel very comfortable planting, but we're all dealing with real wet fields, and I can just say thanks to this that most of our vegetables Vegetable growers used raised beds and plastic mulch, so most things are going to be okay. Great. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) Well, see, at least I I have to say that North Alabama has had pretty nice weather. We've had a lot of rain, but but we've had enough breaks in the in the rain to to get. all our planting done. Marguerite, do you, you, you think everything's been okay here? Oh, that's good. Yes, Marguerite says yes. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, we'll see what happens this summer because, you know, I was uh, out at Riverview Farms in North Georgia and they said that what they're seeing is a lot of heavy rains followed by no rain at all followed by heavy rain so, uh-huh. so we might be talking
talking about drought in, in a month or two. So we'll be prepared for anything. Yeah. We'll see. Okay, well, great, everyone. Go, uh, thanks so much for that input. And you can go ahead and remute your mics again. Karen, I don't know if you wanted to go ahead and run through these four kind of categories, general categories, uh, just to get through these major problems. Uh, and then we can kind of go from there. Yeah, let's, uh, I just wanted to talk about what our strategies for, you know, dealing with the bad weather. So, so like I was saying, um, if you're planting late, like like um, everyone in North Carolina is, then then we're fine. You know, as as long as we're still in the right sort of planting windows, we'll just proceed as as we can. Um, the second situation we're seeing is just failed plantings, like like Shirley's situation, and we're just having people go back out and and establish a new plot and and get started again so yeah um and and leslie leslie can send seeds for um for your replacement crop i leslie if if it's the if it's the first crop is is that how that works can you yep that's right so if it's the crop number one that we originally sent you seeds for then let me know at organic at tuskegee.edu and uh, we'll we'll get you some replacement seeds uh whatever is necessary but if it's crop two um, then they would provide the, their own seeds for replanting if it's within the window of, uh, for planting for their specific area. This is Shirley. We don't need any more seeds or plants. We, uh, we have already gotten them and we've already planted crop one and crop two is going in this afternoon. Great. Good. All right, all right, and then, then the, the third situation we're encountering is just a poor crop establishment, you know, if, if your field did get flooded or rained out, but, but some of the crops survived, um, you know, it, you're going to have to use your judgment about whether you want to just, you know, if you lost the majority of your crop, you probably just want to, going to want to go ahead and, and replant. But the other alternative is to, to um, you know, plant in in that plot to reseed the the areas that have not been that didn't get established. And and so I don't know, Franklin or, or Kakawasa, you want to talk about um, how how you want farmers to make that decision and and how you want to um, measure the, you know. Poor germination. If they do have like a 75% planting, is that going to impact how they collect data? Well, I have sent. This is Shirley talking. I have sent the information um, on on the second trial. I mailed it today. Um, the same information that I did on the first trial, um, along with that was the soil test and something else. Anyway, I asked in the information that I mailed, do you want us to continue with trial one, uh, keeping data, and just do a double duty or just call it quits on trial one and just focus on the trial two that we've just planted and I sort of feel like that might be the best way for us to go and maybe it would depend on each individual okay can you hear me yes okay I I, I think that uh, uh, every every case is gonna be different yes for those farmers who already planted and lost all their crops, or at least 50% of their crop, they need to replant and restart from scratch. And we will send the seeds for that. But for those like Shirley uh, who, who lost probably not everything, 
but to have some just missing plants, you can still replant those that are missing. And uh, if you need seeds to do that, let us know. We send seeds to replant those. Now, in some other cases, maybe the windows for planting uh -huh. is, has already passed. Yeah. So for those people, we will not suggest that they plant because you know there is a specific reason why you know outside of the window we don't plant. You're going to have probably insect problems. You're going to have uh, uh, weather issues. So infestation and all these things. So you got to be careful. And, uh, you know, maybe uh, talk with your extension agent. If uh, your extension agent says, go ahead and plant, then you can do it. Now, the other thing is for surely again, where you have two different uh, plot, I think that uh, if you have made the decision to restart, just go ahead and send the information about the new plot that you have. You know, okay. Started. Okay. Will do. Okay. Great. Okay. Great. Yeah. This and is surely one more time, <laughs> and then I'll be quiet. Um, but we had put a ground cover of wood chips in the tomato plot, and it just completely demolished the tomatoes because the gr the wood chips were just floating around and getting all messy. And so that tomato plot is just gone. And we, we'll just give up on that. Now, the peas did manage to come up. Some of them germination was very poor. And I don't know. We'll just play it by ear on that one. But uh, thank you for that answer. I like that answer to my question. Shirley, your tomato, did you do transplant or you do you did direct seeding? Both. I have some that I had left over that I planted in another garden, and I will use those if needed. But I am in in my second plot, planting seeds for the tomatoes. Yeah, is that going to be, is that, was that direct seeding? Or are you going yes, to? Direct seeding. I, I hope that works. And I'm using not wood chips as a ground cover in the tomato plot, but landscape cloth. Okay. Yeah, just report you know, what, what you are doing and uh, we'll be fine yeah. with that. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Great, thanks. Um, yeah, and you know, and things are gonna come up in the next week and the next month. So just stay in touch with all of us and, and we'll figure things out as we go. Um, okay. And just the last, the last thing that we wanted to mention is that you know, with all this rain comes a lot of different, especially diseases. So, um, you know, you, you're going to want to be on the lookout for, you know, moisture related disease, lots of blights, mildews, molds, and, uh, and just, you know, keep an eye on your plantings. And, uh, and if you see anything that looks questionable, please take a picture and, and send it to us and we will um, try to mitigate whatever problem you have, you know, on the front end, so so we can make sure that we have good crops coming in. So just wanted to give you a heads up on that. Hey, Karen, do all the states have plant disease and insect clinics? I know in North Carolina, our clinic at NC State will get back to you pretty fast. Uh, that's a good question. I guess, uh, you know, we do have Franklin, who's our insect inside insect clinic um and you know I, i'm not sure does tuskegee have a, a, a you know plant diagnostic lab or, or um, plant pathologist that we can we can take advantage of or through auburn i i think that it's auburn auburn has that uh capability 
Okay, so if if we do find a problem, are we going to want to have people mail mail a sample to the Auburn lab? Uh, I don't think for this project, that's what we say. Uh, they're going to probably provide pictures first to uh, Franklin, and Franklin will make the determination whether, you know, uh, he can just look in at the picture, know what the problem is, or if he will ask them to send him the sample. Uh, thank you. So that's going to be, uh, you know, the decision is going to be made at the level of Franklin. Okay. Right. So the protocol. So that'll be for for insects, but diseases. Do we have a pathology expert here, or might we get a faster response to the grower by going through the clinics if we have them? Uh oh. Uh oh, Franklin. I think we're having a microphone problem. There. Try again. Can you hear me? Yeah, that's much better. We hear you. Yes, now. we can hear you now. Oh, they can hear, but we can't hear them. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yes, go ahead, Franklin. Yes, yes. Can you hear me? Yes, yes Franklin, go ahead. Okay. Yes. When it comes to diseases, the uh, Karen uh, said something a few minutes ago. Yes. Uh, uh, with a lot of water, high temperatures, and stuff, uh, we are <laughs> bound to run into or. Oh, uh, likely to run into a number of disease issues. So this is the time we need to be talking about, uh, even for our farmers, apart from irrigation, which they are doing and turn the wa your water off and make sure the place is well drained and the way you plow your field and water collects in the field. There are cultural practices that uh, um, at this point, if you find that there are puddles developing on your field, if you can drain it out somehow let the water leave uh, if it's just a small location because if you have um, moisture issues with the high uh, with the kind of temperature and humidity we have for those growing um, squash you run into all kinds of issues including anthracnose and other uh, uh, a few other problems now when it comes to diseases we have a pathologist here there are some of the diseases, uh, uh, a number of us can do th that basic identification. I'm able to do some amount of disease identification. But the great thing is that I'm able to tell exactly what I can do and what I cannot do. So uh, if I need to consult a pathologist here, um, I'll do that. But if the questions come to us, at least we know enough to know where to, to, to forward it to if we have to. Have I answered the question? Yeah, th thank you, Dr. Karku. We really appreciate that. Um, so the protocol for the Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee farms are going to be to contact uh, the, our uh, main email address, organic at tuskegee.edu, with images immediately of any sign of pest or disease. Um, yeah. And then, so for North Carolina, Dr. Davis is saying that uh, there may be a step that you can take. So I think the moral of the story here is that uh, for each uh, your your main contact, you need to contact your your main contact and ask what you should do in that that scenario. Yeah, uh, but we already said that even bef uh, even though you are going to talk to us, you always talk to your main contact in your state. Uh, yeah. So if you notice the response I gave to the pest problem from Mr. Uh, Ken Larson. I was trying to find out who was his contact person. I couldn't figure out which state we were dealing with. Right. I wanted to be sure that I knew who uh, needed to be informed uh, or um, kept in the loop about what we were talking about. So okay. maybe next time a farmer asks a question, we have to ask them to specify where they are, um, where they are located. Okay, sounds good. If I have my way, I would rather prefer that when the questions come from the farmer, I talk to the coordinator of that region uh, with my response, and then it goes. If it will not take too much time, I'll prefer the communication to be that way. Oh, okay. I think that's that sounds pretty in line with with what we've got. So we'll we'll do it that way. 
So Janine, would you encourage people to get in touch with you and send a sample to the diagnostic lab in North Carolina if it seems like a very pressing, pressing issue? If it's real pressing, I suggest they get up with their extension agent and get it sent in through the extension agent or we have the ability to, if you can get really good pictures, if it is a disease that is, has very characteristic lesions or such, our clinic will go ahead and diagnose off pictures too. So of course with a lot of these diseases, the, the faster the better we can respond, the, the faster we get that diagnosis. So I'm suggesting to people that they, they get it to the clinic as quick as possible and also communicate with me, but I don't want them to get held up if yeah. I'm out of town, you know, when the disease hits, especially if we're, yeah. we're talking one of these fast moving blights. Right. Okay. That sounds great. Maybe, um, well, I guess if they're working through their local extension agent, that's, that's not sort of general information. We can email everyone, but. Maybe we can email just these recommendations out to everyone. Um, is, and is I, all of high? the agents and all, with all of my counties that I'm working with in North and South Carolina, they are all aware of, of the project. So everyone should be prepared just for this kind of thing. Great. Okay, great. No, Dr. Uh, Thomas, is, is, yes, is Casey online? No, he's not. He's not on with us today. Okay. But for the Mississippi folks, uh, Dr. Berrickman is your, your main contact. So if there's uh, any go between between you and Dr. Berrickman, then just make sure that he's always copied on, on that correspondence as well. Really, if we just copy everyone, <laughs> uh, it tends to help get the, get the message out so as quick as possible so we can get the problem solved as quick as possible. Dr. Pomlaku, do you have any other comments that you'd like to make to everyone regarding their recovery strategies? Uh, not really, unless some of our farmers have some specific questions that they want us to address. Okay. But the general, uh, you know, in general, we cover what they need to keep in mind and what they need to do in case of uh, crop failure. And I think that that Crop failure is uh, probably uh, the issue in North Carolina, right? We don't have that elsewhere. Is that what? Is that correct? Karen, I think the Carolinas in Georgia, right? Issue is in Georgia also. Crop failure. Yes, we do have. Uh, we had we lost half of our potato crop uh, because of the rain. Not disease. We don't really have big disease problems. Uh, who, who is this talking, please? This is Shirley. I'm sorry. Oh, Shirley, are, are you in Georgia? Yes, Savannah, Georgia. Okay. So, uh, is there anybody else? from Georgia experiencing this uh, issue because uh, I, I think that we have about four farmers in Georgia. I know right. the news has shown farmers in Bullock County suffering from the from the uh, moist, from the wet rains, the heavy uh -huh. rain. Okay, I, I think that uh, we will get in touch with the other farmers in Georgia and see how the crop uh, uh, the crops are doing? We are close to South Carolina. We're right across the river from okay. South Carolina. Okay. We are in Effingham County, Georgia. Okay, uh, uh, Janine, uh, are farmers in uh, South Carolina experiencing the same issue? There we go. Now you can hear me. <laughs> okay. Um, I sent out an email to all of my folks on the 8th. And so far, I know that we've had some people here in far western North Carolina that have had to do some replanting, um, but seem to be okay. But so far, nobody else has gotten back to me that they have a disaster. 
Okay, do you know whether they all have planted? Um, well, that was part of my questions to them to just give me an update, and those, those emails are just slowly coming in. A lot okay. of them have. A lot of them are doing fine. We've got okay. squash being harvested. We had some blossom end rot. Um, let's see, that farm is in, that was in North Carolina. He had some blossom end rot, but it looks like his plants came out of that um, once the sun came out. So, so far, nobody's like freaking out. Yeah, <laughs> okay. I think we're okay. Okay, no. very good. Megan we is coming through. Uh, Megan is coming through and says we were late planting due to rain, but have not lost plantings. And uh, Megan, that is Spartanburg, South Carolina. Did I just hear someone try to come on? Was that a question? Yes, I, yeah. I was going to ask the question. Oh, go ahead. Don't go ahead, Dr. Clarko. <laughs> The blossom and rot, it, it, was it just directly just a calcium uh, deficiency or it, you have, they have calcium, but it's just a, a moisture issue. That, what I'm asking is that sometimes when you do the salt test, you actually have calcium, but it's a, an issue, it's a moisture issue. So you will still experience a, a blossom and rot. Yeah, and that's what we discussed it. That was probably what was happening is he just didn't have enough sunlight going on for him to have things moving through that plant. As yeah, that's, well as that, 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 that's that's exactly what happened. Once the sun came back out again and the plant was able to transpire normally, the yeah. problem resolved itself. Yeah, so it's a temperature, calcium, and water issue. So, yeah, okay. Yep, exactly. Very good. Okay. Um, and real quick before we move on to our last, um, we have an introduction to make actually. We have a new team member and Dr. Quarku, I'm going to let you introduce our new team member. Um, I couldn't tell if she was on on the call or not, but uh, so real quick before we do that, does anyone else have any other comments or questions or reports? Mm -hmm. Going once, going twice, and sold to Dr. Quarku. I'll pass it on to you now. Okay, so uh, we have uh, Dr. Anita Chituri uh, who has joined us. Uh, she's an entomologist by training. Um, she had a PhD from uh, University of Georgia. Um, she was uh, working at Auburn University, and we stole her from Auburn University. And uh, we were actually in the field, uh, and so uh, that's why we were a little late, and we'll be heading back there immediately after this uh, meeting. Uh, yeah, so this is Dr. Chituri, and um, you want to say this? Yeah, just wanted to say hi, great to be, you know, I'm also very collaborators, this is my first time. So hopefully for the future meetings, we'll be able to contribute. Uh, yeah, uh, other than that, uh, happy to join the team and looking forward um, for more progressive and interactive meetings and productive meetings, yep. All right. Very good, very good. Thank you so much. We're really excited to have Anita. Um, she has quite a broad background, brings lots of skills and knowledge to this project. So we are very excited to have her. Um, she not only is, she's just got that good uh, uh, entomology and pathology background. So we're just really excited about that. Um, and with that being said, we are about, we were kind of aiming to keep these meetings under 45 minutes uh, from here on for the rest of the summer. So if, no one else has any questions, then we will go ahead and wrap it up for the day. I'm going to wait. I'm going to hang out here for another another couple minutes, uh, even after kind of saying goodbye, uh, just in case anyone has uh, any last minute questions. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. We are the Southeast Organic Partnership at Tuskegee University, uh, joined by lots of partners across the Southeast to strengthen organic agriculture in the region. Open for lots of sunshine for everyone. <laughs>
<laughs> thank you, thank you. I think we're gonna we're gonna get some rain here this afternoon in Tuskegee, so <laughs> let's hope it's not gonna be a bad one. Keep it for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. And I, I guess one, right. last, one last thing to say real quick is that uh, farm visits are going on now. So if you haven't had your farm visited yet, uh, you should be on the schedule or getting on the schedule soon. Uh, we, we promise to make one visit, at least one visit over the next couple months uh, to check in and see how everything's going and address any uh, problems that you might be having, uh, you know, face to face. Uh, we're also doing some video interviews with, with some farmers. So if you're interested in doing that, uh, definitely let us know and we'll make sure to uh, include you in that little project. It's really exciting to kind of see the face of the farmers. Um, so with that, I am going to sign off. Leslie Grill here, project coordinator. Thanks so much, everyone, for joining us. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks, Thank everyone. Bye-bye.